Okay, this says uh, use the definition of a derivative or the derivative rules to find f prime. Well, that's easy enough. It's just going to imply that or require the power rule. So we have f prime of x is equal to bring down the power. That's three x squared uh, plus we have nine x. Bring down the power. That's eighteen x minus one twenty. Okay, so that's our derivative. So now it wants us to find the second derivative. That's easy enough. Apply the power rule again. Bring the two down, we have six x plus 18. So then this says, for the next part of the problem, use closed interval notation to enter your answers. Closed interval notation would just be brackets separated by a comma. So on what intervals is F increasing or more specifically non-decreasing? So we need to figure out for what values is the derivative zero because where the derivative is zero, I know the function is going from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, decreasing to increasing. So I'm gonna set this first um, derivative equal to zero. Let's pick a different color. So if I set this thing equal to zero, um, I'm going to start by factoring out a three. So I have three times the quantity x squared plus six x minus 40 equals zero. So let's see, can we factor that three multiplies to negative 40 adds up to six? I think so. We have x plus 10 and x minus 4 multiplies the negative 40 adds up to 10. So if I solve this, I get x equals negative 10 or positive 4. So to figure out which one of these is a min or a max, or if they're neither at either one of these things, I'm going to write or draw a number line. Oops, this is really delaying. There we go. So I have negative 10 and I have four. So pick a number less than negative 10, let's say negative 100. I'll plug it into the derivative, see if I get a positive or a negative. Negative 100, this will be a negative, this will be a negative, negative times a negative is a positive. If I plug in a value between the two, let's say zero, I'll get three times 10 times negative four, that's gonna be a negative number. If I plug in a positive number, let's say positive 100, I'll get a positive times a positive, I'll get a positive. So it looks like at negative 10, my derivative is going from positive to negative. So my function, the graph of the function is going from increasing to decreasing. And at four, it's going from negative to positive. So my function is going from decreasing to increasing. So we have a max at negative 10, a minute negative, I'm sorry, a minute positive four. So this says, on what intervals is f increasing? It's increasing where the derivative is positive, here and here. So increasing from negative infinity to negative 10, union from 4 to infinity. On what intervals is f decreasing? It's decreasing where the derivative is negative. So it's decreasing from negative 10 to 4. On what interval is f concave down? So that's going to be the same concept, except now we're going to use the second derivative. So I'm going to set the second derivative equal to 0. Let's pick another color here. We'll do purple. I have 6x plus 18 equals 0. I don't know why this pen is being so stupid. I get 6x equals negative 18. x equals negative 3. Do the same thing. Make a number or a, a sign chart. It's for a number less than negative 3, let's say negative 20. I plug it in. This is going to be a negative if I plug in a number larger than negative 3, like 0, this is going to be positive.
So my interval, f is concave down everywhere where the second derivative is negative. So from negative infinity, open parenthesis, to negative 3 bracket. And it's concave up from negative 3 to infinity. And that's it.